Matusk and Brett Wingfield here um, Thursday afternoon live on Facebook for the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company. And, and YouTube. Uh, pardon me? And YouTube. And YouTube. <laughs> and uh, R2. Yeah. Your tube. Um, and uh, the last couple of weeks we've been working on habitats. And if you follow it along, I don't know if you've been watching, but we're doing some nothing nothing out of the ordinary but things we do every day but a lot of you that are working on habitats uh if, if you've not done it before or haven't done a lot of them you know it can get kind of overwhelming and it doesn't need to be <clears throat> it must be about 90 degrees in iowa replace today oh my gosh it's warm Um, Labor Day and so we will have tomorrow um, don't go to the grocery store tomorrow don't no. don't even drive on the highway we try to get no. out of here a little early so we can even get out of our driveway yep. because the highways are packed pretty full with tourists yep spending yep. that expensive gas <laughs> yes yes they um, do so anyway we're looking forward to the weekend and uh, um, celebrate with friends and friends and family and yep. good food yep. and Long vacation weekend Fireworks. Monday, Fourth of July is Monday, so we get a long weekend this weekend. It's kind of fun, and uh, we've got fire, fireworks stands all over. And I think Kate's dad is the godfather of fireworks around <laughs> yeah. here. I'm yep. pretty sure. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, habitats. We do a lot of habitats here. We do everything from um, multi-species big brown bears, uh, black bears. We do. Um, sheep and I mean birds and eagles and and big stuff all the way down to little stuff and <clears throat> I always thought in our business I know you do too the it's in the details you know um, you can mount a really nice deer and if the habitat isn't convincing the deer just lacks a little in re realism uh, we started this elk and, and uh, you mounted this elk and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous ranch bull. Um, we had the antlers freeze dried and, and they're nice and plump. They, they look just like they did when they came in. <clears throat> it's kind of an early season summer, summer coat. And this is a, a real special um, elk for a friend of ours. And um, so we kind of did a special habitat. But uh, we try to make our habitats, you know, as, um, Put all the bells and whistles into them and all the realism that we can is just like we do in the animal and it really um, like I said is a detractant when somebody falls short on the habitats and <clears throat> last week we showed you we were using a uh, Dale Manning's habitat rock yeah. and this is a foam rock um, it comes in a sheet and you can break it and cut it um, we screw it together you can pin it together or screw it together in the shapes that you want and it makes a real, you know, it's, it's actually sculpted from real rock, or not necessarily sculpted, but molded from real rock and silicone molds. Um, so it's very, very real is realistic. And years ago, we used to make shale rocks, our shale rocks out of latex molds, and we took a real rock, and I explained to you how we took, uh, Mandy and Mark did the, the latex molds, and then we made auto body rocks. Yeah. And same thing as this, only they were hard plastic. Yeah. And that worked really well too. Um, so we can, you can look back in some of our YouTube videos, I think we show you how to do that also. But uh, anyway, that's what we did to construct the rock and the elk. Now, I explained to you last week, he has a rod, he has a male pipe, and I think it's a, I'm not familiar with my pipe terminology, but it's heavy walled or thick walled pipe. Yeah. That's what goes up inside of a larger pipe inside of the elk's body that we foamed in. Um, it's in there really nice and sturdy and straight. And we told you last week if you want to know how to get those straight, it can be a little tricky. And we had a little tip for you on how to do that. Um, the elk slips on and slips off. 
this has to go into a customer's house. So, um, first of all, with these massive antlers, um, you and I have tried doing that <laughs> delivery <laughs> yes. before and uh, not taking all antlers down. off. And sometimes customers don't want antlers off. Yeah. Uh, they want to leave them on for record book reasons or for who knows why, um, just because that's the way he was. Yeah. Some people don't want their antlers separated or pinned or anything you know, like that. So we <clears throat> pin these, and we'll show you how we put them on and off. We have a male-female sleeve, square stock, and a, a nice sleeve that fits they fit on and they come off. The secret to doing that is take really good measurements so that you get those perfectly back the way they want. Yeah. Customers don't want them goofy, <laughs> wider than they shot, and they don't want them real narrow compared to what they shot, they want what they got. So that's really, really important. So to deliver this, we're gonna take the antlers off. They'll lay safely in the truck or trailer. Um, the elk will slide off because it's got a pipe in into the big rock. Um, and then the rail comes off of this nice walnut base that we have down here. That rail will come off once the elk is out of there. Then this whole insert, um, I think that we showed you was made of just uh, one by four pine. It had a double half inch plywood on the top that everything's built on. That will come off. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces to this elk that any one person could deliver it if it was necessary. And customers all the time call up and they say, I just moved, can you come and help me move my whatever it happens to be? And uh, it might be a big brown bear, it might be you know, an elk, and you know, it might be something big. So if you can get them down into, I call it bite-sized pieces, so you can do little by little, it's very, very helpful. Much more manageable, yes. Um, and we told you last week, we had a couple projects going at the same time. We had this, um, big white tail over here and very similar to the construction that we did on this space that too has the um, habitat rock, habitat rock construction um, and we showed you how, how we seam those with auto body putty to cover up the seams when you have another rock coming in here rather than having a big crack that you sawed or cut um, we will take auto body putty and texture that in so that has a wood base um, it has our rock, it has a post and sleeve, yeah. just like the elk does, only on a smaller scale, so that deer will come off and go on. Yeah. And there's a lot of commercial things like that you can buy. Um, we a lot of times make our own um, that we think are nice and sturdy and work well for us, yeah. but uh, everybody has a different method. Some people have PVC pipes up inside of them, some people sure. have pipes, some people have um, square stock. and. I think this one's square. This square one's stock. Yep. Yeah. That one. That one's a round one. We did round with the peg, the yep. index peg in the top, and I think this one's round. But yeah. And so he's um, wood on the bottom. Um, he's got uh, the habitat rock. He has a little post in the center to start with, and it doesn't matter if if you um, mount the animal first, do the habitat last. But we usually try to um, have the mannequin connected to the base yeah. pedestal because it's Absolutely. way hard if you're working with bondo and drills and holes and trying to make a hole up through the fur yeah. um, we've done that before and that's <laughs> difficult that's you know challenging sure um, so why don't we should we pull that yeah. one out here do you have room with the elk or do you want me to move the elk no I think the elk will be fine I'll move him and shall we take the deer off put him on a stand so we can work on the habitat don't sit down I moved your chair okay. <laughs> Used to do that all the time. <laughs> On purpose. I have to have you hold down there. There it is. See, there's a square stock and it has a female tube in there. I got this. Now, I think Brett was explaining to you last. Uh, Let's turn them around and show them this. Um, last week, how we put a, uh, oh, yeah. a square block. We do, the, we do the auto body putty um, in the back here. And even if we don't, we will somehow fasten a square block into here 
because once you do a pedestal mount, if you buy one, sometimes they'll have a block in them, but a lot of times they don't. So I think you took, um, cut out some of the foam. Yep. Took a piece yep. of plywood, yep. bondled the plywood beneath the depth of where you're gonna auto body putty over. Yep. Um, you did the auto body putty on there, smoothed yep. it out. Um, it's like glass. Our, if we do leather on here, like we showed you that a couple weeks ago, yeah. if you do leather, that's gonna cover up everything, including your screw holes. Yeah. But because that block's in there, we can mount him on a mounting stand. And we can um, twist him, turn him upside down, whatever we want to, as long as he's on the mounting stand. And we probably won't take that mounting stand, we won't take that plate off until this is completely done, um, habitats all minute. finished, yeah. uh, Base is done. We'll probably take it off to do leather on the back. Yep. It slides on and goes to the customer. Yeah. Customer can take it home. He can slip this off of the base, take the base separate, take the deer separate. So yep. that's, that's something we do all the time because yep. you don't want to screw into foam or whatever yep. you've covered in the back. You don't want to screw into there and have it fall off of the base because <laughs> nothing's holding it. Um, I think we've got that on the back of that sable. Should we show them? Sure. Push this out of the way and show that real quick. The more we can show them, the better. And this is a sable we've been working on that's in the process. Um, this is old airbrush tubing for blood vessels through the face. Um, we got a septum in the nose. He's been altered into a pedestal. This was a um, wall mount sable. And this is how we do something like that. Now, now we will finish over that so that we can put our leather if that's what we're going to do. And then a mounting stand will screw right to that and you got a nice sturdy surface so you can turn him upside down you can you know yeah. up down whatever you want to do yeah yeah pull him out of the way so that that's going to take you another extra half hour to do but you'll you'll really be well worth it happy yeah. that you did it Now what? Um, that's, should we paint a rock for him? Yeah. Now make sure all your, Good. all your seams. The one thing we didn't tell you last week too is a lot of these rocks, even when we make them ourselves or buy them, they have a mold release on them. And, and they come out of silicone molds. So a lot of times there's some kind of a release so they can get them out and get more poles on these rock sheets. Um, and make sure that you scrub them with Dawn and water or lacquer thinner or acetone or something. Um, scrub where you're going to be auto body puttying your seams, um, otherwise it can lift off. Uh, Marco would like to know which is the best glue for ear liners? You got an answer for that. Uh, we like Dermagrip. Um, Dermagrip pink? Yeah, the pink Dermagrip um, <clears throat> does a really good job. The Pro One Hide Paste does a really good job. Um, acrylic caulk people use. Um, but we've had really good luck with the Dermagrip the lately. Dermagrip pink seemed that we found that yeah. by accident. They sent it to us as a yeah. sample and we laughed at it for a long time. Yeah. Sat on the shelf and we thought it was a gimmick. And uh, we have a lot of things to try. And we can't just try everything. Yeah. And one day we said, well, let's try that pink Dermagrip. Yeah. And it's like a great product, yeah. a great, great product. Um, another thing the Dermagrip had is instructions, which for some reason we read, we don't always do that. <laughs> um, but what helped a lot was painting the ear liner first. Um, let the, we do our clay work for our ear butts. We usually paint uh, glue over that. And the Dermagrip instructions said to paint the entire ear liner and let it set up. Um, we did that and had really good luck. And that's and helpful that's with any of your ears, whether you're using your yeah. glues, whether you're using um, Pro One or the other Derma, you know, the Dermagrip yeah. hide paste, or there's a lot of different 
hide booze out there, but if you paint that ear liner first and let it dry, it works well. Let it dry and then uh, paint back over it and then go to slide the ear liner in it. It gives it a kind of a prime surface mm -hmm. to stick to, works really well. But the secret is, the secret to ears sticking is not so much the glue. There's a lot of good glues out there. Make sure that your ear liner is not tight. Make sure that it's, I don't want to say a sloppy fit, but that you yeah. have plenty of shrinkage room. Um, yeah. Make sure that the ear liner is slightly smaller. Um, make sure that it fits comfortably and aligns nice. Um, the glue is important, but it's incidental to those two things, I yeah. think. And, and babysit it. And clean that skin too. Mm -hmm. Clean the oils off the skin. We like to use lacquer thinner to yeah. wash the inside of the leather. And, we um, take a little bowl with our ear skin and we scrub it, scrub the ear skin with um, wire brush and lacquer thinner, yeah. towel dry it. Don't over dry them. Make sure that, that there's still some nice stretch yeah. in them. We probably spend more time on that single process than any other part of the Good animal. Good ears are extremely, I mean, to get an ear like this, this is a really a beautiful ear. Um, I, can, I can feel the edge and there is not one little wiggle in this edge. It's a beautiful ear. And you don't get that by throwing in a pair of ear liners. Yeah. You know, you, you really, I tell when we were teaching students, I would say, forget about the animal, mount this ear yeah. first. Mount yeah. one ear, if you're happy with it, mount another ear then we'll worry about the animal. We card our ear edges too, speak, not to get too far off track, but we card our ear edges um, as they're drying too with the And we've got a screen. great little carding system, that, uh, yep. that uh, perforated difference. plastic screen as well as yep. the other, other part that we have them for, man, a lot of different animals. We've got them for elk, yep. we've got them for bobcats, we've got them for white-tailed mule deer. More probably too, huh? We lost a couple more, to more, to come. Come. more to come. More to come. More to come. Uh, right. Teresa would like to know, is there a way to color the foam where the dirt is going to go? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you can put, um, you can, there's a lot of different things you can do. You can you do resin dye. <clears throat> you can put, um, um, if you're going to use acrylic paint, be careful with acrylic paint because it's kind of a water base and yeah. it will make your foam foam more. Yeah. Um, we had intended to paint him today <laughs> and forgot. Uh, yeah, didn't need to, fortunately, but um, I've seen t people take uh, aerosol paint and spray the aerosol paint into their foam as they're mixing it. Um, that works. It does get a little bit uncontrollable, but um, it will color your foam itself, but works real good to shape it like this, leave it raw, and then paint it. You can come back with either a spray paint or, yeah, a, yeah. or a latex paint and paint all the way down over the foam before you do dirt, mm -hmm. and that'll help you too. Uh, one more question uh, from Angel regarding the ear. Uh, do you all ever mold and cast the ear cartilage after it's removed? Um, yes, we've we done have. that. Not yeah. necessarily for a customer piece, but that would be a competition yeah. method that we would probably always yeah. do. Yeah. Um, and you would take the cartilage, remove it perfectly, um, yeah. set it up over clay. Yeah, absolutely. Make a make two-piece mold make out a two of it. Piece, yep. Yep, we've done that. Bondo on one side. You can do rubber on the interior if you want to pull that. Mm -hmm. if you want to pull that inner ear detail out. Um, yeah, that's a whole two-part live in itself too. It is. We it's, have we have several one. of our ear liners that we sell that were originally made that way. Um, mm -hmm. um, Brian made his mule deer yeah. ear liners and that way. Um, the elk ear liners yeah. that way. We've had. We did the white tail. You did the white tail like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I think you did that's the hair. A lot of work, but it's a good way to get a very accurate ear. Yep. Yeah. All righty. Well, shall we, we see put what some happens? color down? Um, do you want to put? I think I've got a few for you to choose from. I think that's the well, you, dark. If I paint, you're talking. Uh oh. I'll paint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, this is um, our our uh, habitat kind of rock paint that we use, and it's a acrylic latex type variety. And, and uh, we, don't want to, we don't want to use oil paint. Oil paint takes a little too long to dry. 
um, this works good. We have several, you can use any color, whatever yeah. color you think looks nice. Um, the way we ever devised a paint system is I had a pretty, pretty rock. I carried this gigantic rock to Baumgard's. I carried it into the paint station. This rock had to weigh 50 pounds. I carry it, carried it in and put it on the counter and started looking at all their paint flecks and trying to match it up. Um, I took um, the rock home, the artificial rock home that I made from it with all my different paint that I got from, from the farm and fleet place up here and started trying to paint a rock. The first rock that I painted was smaller than this and I'll bet you it took me six hours to do. And I thought, this is not gonna work. And after you do enough habitats like this, you know what goes together, the different colored dirts, the different rocks, um, what combinations of colors. So in the catalog, we have um, Canadian shale, yeah. we've got Utah red rocks, we've yeah. got Colorado uh, gray, Yep. Is that it? And we'll the, uh, um, yeah, must be three. And you can put these on any place that you want, think they look nice, but the way we kind of start is we start out with a, the darkest color of the four color set. set. So this is uh, deep base gray. Yep. So that's what you're going to start with, I think. That. The next color is going to be a lighter color, and that's going to be shade gray. This is for the Colorado rock color nation. Then we have a yellow ochre and we'll have Kate get some good close-ups. We'll move away and show you this rock down here because we're not going to, this one won't dry fast enough for us. Um, yellow ochre to simulate rust in the cracks. And then we'll also have a, um, a rust that we actually take a fine brush and paint it way down into the cracks to simulate um, water landing on the rocks. The last place that water evaporates from is deep down in the cracks. So the place that it rusts, if there's any mineral in the rock, is going to be, you're probably going to have some dark rust spots off and through there and it act, adds a lot of realism. Are you dipping your paintbrush in water, Brett? I am. I'm just, um, this goes on pretty well straight, but I've put just a little bit of water in it. You don't want to take up any detail on, of the texture of the rock. So we'll put just a little bit um, as I'm brushing it on and it helps it kind of thins it out just a little bit so I can dab it in and push it into the texture a little bit better. And um, now you're kind of scrubbing it on and yeah. I've noticed when in doing this process it's easy because it is a thick skin, thick uh, paint that you get. Looks like our picnic table. Yeah. <laughs> I would say that. I, that's, <laughs> um, but anyway. Um, by scrubbing it like you're doing, you're working it out, all those little cracks. Yeah, and that's um, with any light, whether you're outside, inside, there's going to be little glares, and um, sometimes you're going to have spots that don't get coverage, and it seems like they're the low spots. So I'm just kind of working the brush back and forth, around and around, and letting it kind of push itself down into the detail, and hopefully I get good coverage out of this. But we'll just go through kind of quick and um, get a good base color on it. Um, I'll, this is going to have a whole bunch of other colors, um, dirt, debris, all kinds of stuff on the rock. So um, if you have worry spots of little texture areas that maybe didn't translate as well as you thought they might, um, you'll be surprised what the finished product looks like by the time you get the first coat of paint is really going to help. The second coat it gets better and the third one it gets better and better and then you get dirt on it and all of a sudden where was that seam you can see the seams on this one are it are already uh, disguising pretty nice teresa would like to know if you were to want a granite looking rock how would you get the little sparkles in it we i tried um, telling someone pardon me we had that little can that we we're going to sell yeah, yeah. Um, we used to buy from Hyden Beak, yeah. Larry Goldman from Hyden Beak, and it was mica. And those of you that don't know what mica is, four mica countertops. They still make four mica. Can you buy four mica? Um, it was the laminate countertop was called for mica. 
and it was they used to use mica in countertops and this was for mica it was a replacement and uh, it had glitter in it and all kinds of glitter well for mica or the mica um, Marty Hansen brought us mica from oh bucket full yeah, yeah from the Black Hills yeah. and it's laying all over the ground and I'm thinking oh my gosh and it's slivery glittery stuff exactly right. what she's talking about um, but Larry Goldman sold not necessarily powdered it was it was pieces of uh, um, shredded shards yeah. kind of and it was very very thin like paper thin yeah. and we would buy it by the bag by a pound bag so when we made our um, granite rocks like our field stone we would always put a handful of mica in there yeah and I'm sure you can find it I've spent a lot of time trying um, but they used to use it in um, spray ceilings when they would spray the texture in the ceiling they always had oh, mica yeah. chips in it and they would spray it that's why sometimes in ceilings especially in older houses you look up and there's little glitters you know little glitters and so that's what it was used for well then they went to man-made sparkles and they're cut into little tiny squares which don't look like mica at all but mica is what you want I have a very, very limited small supply left from Larry Goldman, and no, you can't too. have it. <laughs> I um, think I have some but too. It's mica, and you can go to the Black Hills. If you can find a mica plant or a mica mine, it's laying on the ground everywhere. And and we used to put that in our rock mache yeah. mix. Yeah. So to make a granite rock, that's what we did. Um, made a fantastic granite rock. And then when you sponge the texture of the rock, the glitters came to the top it was it made a nice rock yeah it really did uh, and i think that kind of might answer keith ha is wondering would you use a sponge and dab it to make it look natural yeah that's yeah. what we used yeah. to do um we kind of use two rocks here um one that we've made forever and ever and ever is we will take a piece of foam we'll pour a chunk of it and cut it into chunks sometimes we use our fish foam leftovers um, yeah. but we'll start with whatever size rock we think we want, and then we will cover it with our rock mache, which has textures in it. Used to have mica okay. in it, but it doesn't anymore. Um, but we will cover it with mache, our rock mache, and then we would sponge it with a damp sponge. As it starts to set, you know, you're gonna have six or seven rocks around. As it starts to set, you would keep sponging it so it doesn't get a flat spot sitting on the table, and it'll dry. Once it's dry, we would paint it, and we used to do a lot of different things to paint our um, granite rocks. We used uh, writ dye sometimes. Yeah. Another good one was, um, um, what's the powder paint? Um, oh, the tempera, powder tempera. 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 Yeah, like yeah. sign paint, that powder paint that you get at Hobby Lobby. Um, used to even sell that. I know, do we still sell tempera paint? I think paint? we had some on the sale. Um, so. But uh, that, that worked good to color them. You can paint them like this if you want to, but any of the transparent colors worked real good. But we used to make all of our granite rocks with a sponge. Yeah. And then the other rock that we make is shale rocks, whether we make them ourselves, sometimes we will free form them out of uh, fish foam and then bondo over them to get our yeah. shape and our sharpness. Um, worth noting as you're painting, um, it helps if you can, if you have a small enough base to turn angles here's a good example of why there's a big spot that i missed right there on the underside get all your under undertone undercuts usually the time you notice that is when you're helping your customer yeah, carry in that's your, the word carry in his elk base and you tip it sideways and you, you see go, a big oh, spot you didn't paint that, um that is very easy easily overlooked um, but just roll it around and turn it and keep looking for little little spots and we'll we'll go through now the next layer you could probably um, try to paint this before this base layer dries but we seem to have a lot better luck letting it dry, letting it dry. Um, the the fear is your um, next color will start to get muddy with this dark color over it so we let it dry you can put it in front of a fan we did it today when we did the elk base outside and man it went fast yeah, um, or in fast. front of a fan 
um, it, it dries real quick. So this is the time of year to do that. In the winter time, that's a different yeah. story. Going outside is not as fun as it as it is now. Um, I can keep doing this. Do you want to talk about what we would do next? Um, um, do you want to talk about paint colors? Just as we build our... Okay, sure, 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 sure. Um, okay. uh, with this color scheme, and like I said, these uh, um, paints, though we sell them in different paint schemes, um, they're just what we've used to come up with, you know, a coloration like this or coloration like that. You can mix and match. Um, you can come up with any color you want. You don't have to follow our scheme at all. It's just something we developed it and we think, wow, that looks kind of nice. Remember how you did yeah. it. So we, that's how the colors ever came to be. But um, the next color is going to be a lighter shade of gray. And this one is very light color. Um, I think most of our systems start with the deep base and then they go to shade. Is that right? I'm not sure that's how painters really uh -huh. operate because I've always learned start light and go dark, go dark yeah. you know. Um, I think Picasso could probably tell me what I do, <laughs> but uh, the, in this instance we start dark and go light. Um, the next color that once this dries you'll take and is the shade color and that's going to be watered down really thin and we'll just take a sponge the same kind of sponge that we use to um, sponge our crack works well, or a paintbrush works good if you can make sure it doesn't look like uh, um, paintbrush strokes in your rock for coloration. And we're going to put this on, leaving a whole lot of contrast. And contrast, what I'm talking about there is let there be dark areas and let there be light areas. Yeah. Uh, Angel would like to know, do you ever, hydro dip your rocks no but that's not out of the question sure that could, that uh that could be if done you, if you Probably. had a nice finish depending yeah. upon as yeah. long as it wasn't too shiny or plasticky looking um your your final coat would be that'd be kind of neat take a Have real you ever image seen those people that take a pail of water and they spray a whole bunch of different <laughs> yeah um, that's, aerosol cans in and then they yeah. dip something in yeah. that's um, no, hydro dip, dip could be done. Um, and then after the shade is on and you think you're headed in the right direction, the next color, and like I, I kind of said before, my thinking when I came up with the different rock colors is a rock sitting out in nature is going to get rained on. When it gets rained on, all the water is going to lay in the low spots, which is going to start to rust. And then as the water evaporates and runs off, it's going to only stay in the very, very cracks and crevices. So my next color that I like to put on is the ochre rust. And ochre rust is more of a yellow. Um, and that color is going to be concentrated along all the valleys. And it's going to be dark to light to a rusty color down the low areas. And then we'll come in with a deep, almost like an orange rust. Um, this one was so pretty when we had it outside. Now we put all that dirt on it. We've lost some of the Blend color. It doesn't look out. quite as nice as um, it did out there. Um, and then each paint, until we get to those final little highlights, kind of gets thinner. So thinner, it seems yeah. like a more, more transparent, mm -hmm. not as heavy and... Um, um, it, it goes on nice and thin and seems like less of an area. So we got full coverage with this one, 50% with the next one, 30% with the next one, and then some really, some highlights. And with those, with four basic colors, you can really get a convincing rock. I think um, you put that yellow on and when it was outside drying, you put it looked like much more yellow than I would have put on. And that was like the prettiest it, rock I've ever seen. I was really excited. Like I said, now I don't see it, it so much. Started to it was really, down, but. really rocky looking. Um, and that, that's a good point too. Um, you know, the, we preach reference, reference, reference when it comes to mountain these animals. Um, 
You can do the same thing with your rocks. Just like you said, you put the real rock on the counter at the, yeah. paint, at the hardware store. Um, put that same real rock right next to the one you're trying to replicate and paint those same colors. And there was a, a taxidermist in our yeah. Iowa association. I've told the story a lot about Jerome Sokolik. Yeah. And Jerome was the first one to ever show our association the granite rocks with the sponge and the mache. Yeah. And Jerome had a very thick notebook, probably more than one, of rocks, just yeah. a plain old field rock or a piece of shale or a piece of limestone. And he said, you spend all this time trying to make, you know, an elk nose look like an elk nose. Why would you stop there when you need to make that rock that goes with that elk look like yeah. a, a rock? And he was very, very right. The people that um, spend the time really studying habitat are going to have better habitat. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So this is going to take a long time to dry. We're probably not going to get on to other colors unless we wanted to hair dry them. Um, but uh, the next step that we would do is you need to cover this with something. And we like, uh, we use dirt um, on our African animals. I mean, we go to Wyoming and Western yeah. South Dakota and we get red dirt and yeah. it looks really nice with those uh, black sable and zebra yeah. pedestals and things like that, a nice um, red colored African dirt. Uh, you can get, you know, black dirt around here. We've got yeah. real black dirt if that's what you want. Um, it's going to show, so make sure the color, you know, looks natural yeah. to yes. your habitat. Our black dirt bases probably wouldn't look as good with a warthog digging <laughs> as yeah. one of the red soiled ones. Yeah. So kind of match the habitat, match the dirt to your critter that you're doing. Um, I remember doing a lot of sheep and things like that for finaws, which were always in the winter, and I have no dirt, and I would have to go out <laughs> with a five gallon buckets and a chisel and chisel it out of the lake, yeah. lake bank, you know, and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> but make sure that you have plenty of dirt when winter comes along. Yeah. Um, yeah. And dirt works good. Um, we have, do we have our soil anywhere? Mm. Grab that, if you can find yeah, it, and show got it, it right over here. Um, um, we have a, a peat soil that works real good, and it's a potting potting soil mixture. But any of the dirt that you put on, and sand, you can use sand, you can put dirt, you can put gravel. Uh, make sure that your stones are, that there's not such heavy things that it falls off. And uh, But we like peat soil because it's extremely lightweight. And, you know, you sifted this on, that elk base, which put it on really nice yeah. and, and smooth. Um, some of this stuff would be too heavy, but uh, here's what it is. It's very light, very lightweight. Yeah. And it absorbs the glue really good, sticks on exceptionally well. And if you live in the north and try to buy that in the wintertime, it's very hard. You're going to have to call Mandy. <laughs> and you got to be careful because sometimes you buy it and it has fertilizer. Yeah. Those white little fertilizer light, things yeah. in it, you know? So make sure yeah. you get total peat. It's called peat soil. It might be called potting soil, different things like that. Sure. Um, um, we have to, and it comes wet. So yeah. you have to dry it before you put it on. Yes. Um, um, so you sifted that on. You painted, once the rock was done, you painted all of the foam with uh, Elmer's glue and water first, correct? Yes. Yep. Yep. To seal the... So we had shaped the foam before we started painting the rock. We had all the foam shaped so that we could blow off the, the little foam crumbs. And then we painted the rock completely, um, went through all the layers. And like we said, outside it went pretty fast or inside with a fan. And then the next step was to seal the foam. And we sealed the foam with Elmer's glue and water. Again, you can, they could probably spray it with an atomizer bottle if you've got a good atomizer or we just brushed it on. Um, put it in a cup, mix 30, 40% water into the Elmer's glue, 50%, mm -hmm. and then um, let that dry. Just like we talked about the ears, it just helps yep. adhesion, kind of seals up the pores of that foam. And then, um, then we put a straight coat of Elmer's glue on. Heavy, thick Elmer's glue. Yep. And thick, we buy it by the gallon. Yep. Um, painted, brushed it on. Um, you started on one side, I started on the other, and three minutes we had it covered with glue and then um, we just sifted, sifted the dirt in on. and then 
pat it really good with our hands, and you said you even rolled it. Well, we have a little roller, and I wanted to make sure for live that it wasn't falling <laughs> off. We, so I, you came in, and I just grabbed the little roller, and I just rolled over it, and it, yeah. it stuck really, really nice. Um, and if you notice, um, I notice how you got it up on the rock a little bit, which looks much more natural than having the rock Glow. come out of the ground like <laughs> yeah. mushroom, you know. Yeah. Um, so we have a little dirt up on the top. And then from here on, it's all to me about um, details and elements and things yeah. like that. And I always say the more elements you have, to a point, um, this looks really, really better with each thing that you add. Um, you had a gorgeous piece of um, okay. twisted cedar that we will add to this elk, and um, it just just was a, oh, you got it. I got um, it. You can see with and without. Now take a look at this base and see if this isn't going to add. We don't know where it's going. We have no sure idea. Exactly. It but was a nice piece um, that we had. Does that not add to, you know, just another nice dimension? That we can so add to. that's another element I would call it. Element is yeah. going to be the rocks, the dirt, the grass, the um, twisted yeah. cedar. Yeah, I don't know, if, Kate. You want to show them that? That's something they can see a little better with the. Yeah. Um, that's just pretty. So we can do. And make sure it's not going to be something that's going to snag a grandkid in the yeah. eye or something like that's, that. That's really important too, and we'll probably use a third of this or yeah. half of it. We don't have to use it all, but. Um, it kind of has the right tone, the right color, and we can lay it in in several different places and just see how it works. But that's another element. Um, we could add an elk antler shed. Yeah, sure. Um, we could. Got to be careful that we don't get too carried away. A we, no go to show, side we go to and shows, a and line. you might see something like this <laughs> mounted, and mm -hmm. they'll have a little bit of snow, and they'll have a boot print, and mm -hmm. then they will have. A no trespassing a sign. And then they'll have a no trespassing <laughs> sign. You can't get a little carried away and where, all right, yep, we're a over mouse the top in the now. corner. And um, um, no, but natural, it, natural, natural. It really does help to add additional elements. Um, and when you to add that up. wood, um, you'll want to know that bugs will eat oak and walnut and everything, but they don't eat cedar, cedar. and juniper. Yeah. So it, this is a, a twisted piece of cedar, and it does not have to be bug-proof. You don't have to worry about a bug ever getting into this. Um, that walnut base, I have had wood sure. bores get yeah. into a walnut base before, yeah. and all of a sudden you got a little pile of sawdust on a base. Oh, I mean a finished base. They eat lacquer and everything. Um, they won't touch this. So if you go out and pick something up off the you know field or lakeshore or whatever, um, you're going to have to treat it for bugs, yeah. and we treat it with um, malathion yeah. and water. And we usually, if we can soak it, that's good. Um, if it's small enough, otherwise we will spray it. And any of you yeah. that have used malathion, it is the most god-awful smell you've ever smelled. It's yeah. terrible smelling stuff. So you saturate this with your malathion water mixture and set it outside and forget about it. Yeah. Go ahead and mount the elk and do all that kind of thing. And when you bring it in, the smell will have dissipated and you'll be able to use it. Yeah. But uh, cedar is safe. Everything else needs to be treated. Artificial is safe. Artificial is great. Uh, Marco would like to know which glue for the solid? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Soil? Maybe soil. Oh, for the soil. soil. I bet it was a, oh. I bet that's a, that's a hot of series. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, Elmer's glue works good. Yeah. Um, that's what we use. We have, uh, we use a lot of Mod Podge here, mm -hmm. Mod Podge, and we use a lot of Elmer's glue also, yeah. and both seem to work real good for our yeah. soil. Um, if we use Mod Podge, probably the flat versus yeah. the gloss. Um, I'd stay away from gloss. Elmer's glue is nice because it does dry to a flat finish. Um, yeah, that works pretty good. Um, another nice element is um, moss. Um, we've got several different options for moss. Those moss seems to grow anywhere there's little cracks and crevices that are going to hold water, and it works really good to camouflage I little saw, imperfections. I, I places on your rock that you never yeah. painted. Moss little is screw great. holes. I think there's a couple of those on there. And um, um, we are, use a lot of moss on on everything, whether it's a bird mount or 
a fish or whatever. And there's artificial moss and there's real moss. Uh, yeah. Usually the real moss is dyed. If it's yeah. not dyed, it will hold its green only temporarily, um, probably a couple years and it's gonna turn really brown. Yeah. So it's nicest if it's dyed. Um, this is artificial. It's a little too green for the elk for me. Yeah. Um, another artificial, which is an interesting one. Um, we used to get this in a roll and this is actually nice color. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's wire, it's copper wire. The whole under, this is nothing but a whole mat of copper wire. Almost like steel wool. Like that's a, part, a Brillo wool. pad or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And then it has um, colored fake moss on the top. Um, we use this a lot on fish mounts and just about everything. It works real good. Um, but if you look real close, you can see little copper colors in there. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of different kind of mosses. You can go to the Hobby Lobbies or the Joann's or those type of places yeah. and they'll have um, nice mosses. Uh, go look at how moss grows. Um, mm -hmm. Our girls, we have powdered moss. Um, yeah. There's the, what's it called? Like the electric static Yeah, the electric mosses. static moss. Um, Scenics, I think, one of the scenic companies that We'll use nature, almost like the name a of it? scenes in nature. Scenes maybe. in nature, yeah. sure. Um, um, Hutch. Yep. Yeah. Hutch Hutchinson. Uh, yeah. And they there's powdered moss that you actually put a glue where you want it, um, sprinkle it on. You hook a little charge up to it with a machine, and you sprinkle it on, and they will stand up. People yeah. do it on to make velvet antlers. Yeah. Um, I know McKinsey carries a lot of somebody. They have a lot of people doing that yeah. all day long to make some of those. I can only imagine that. Um, um, and it comes in different colors. You can make any kind of color yeah, you want. And different lengths. Yep. So it, it's, it's fun to see. Um, next time you're at a show, um, stop and see them. They, they really do some convincing stuff with some of that habitat. But look where moss grows. Take a walk through the woods and look how moss grows. It doesn't just grow on a carpet, although yeah. it can. Um, it doesn't just grow on the north side yeah. like people. If you go by that, you're going to get lost. <laughs> yeah. um, and it I doesn't think. grow in polka dots. <laughs> No, that's, that's, um, that's another we thing. We see that we, a lot. That's a very good point. Um, anybody that we've been teaching people how to do this for so many years that if we tell them to put spots on a trout, you could almost, yeah. they have, if you wanted them to put it a half inch apart, they would never be able to do it. But if they do it, you leave them alone, you come back, it's gonna be half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch. Yep. If they plant grass, it's gonna be half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, <laughs> yeah. half inch. Um, and that's how you do moss, that's how they would do moss too. Yeah. So take a walk. We had a girl um, who planted grass like that on our basis and it was every, very systematic, you know, every inch and a half was a cluster of grass coming out. And I made her go outside, lay on the edge of the driveway and look how grass grows. <laughs> And, uh, I think you've done that with more than one person. <laughs> it's worked here. And, and yeah. she came back and made the best yeah. grass habitats that there yeah. are. But there's a whole lot of different um, things you can put on here. Um, this is one we use a lot. It's, it's nothing but wire with some kind of covering. And, I like that stuff. And moss. I like this stuff. We use it on everything. Um, um, in fact, so much so that when the supply company gets short of them, Cindy comes up and tells us and wants to know how many we need we'll before take, she runs we'll out. We'll take 30 at a time. Um, but you can bend it. You can wrap it around. You can cut it off. You can use just a little bit. You, you know, it's great stuff to use. And um, it's just kind of a moss-covered vine. Yeah, I like that. That goes really well um, about anything. And then, of course, you got all kinds of different uh, pines. Yeah. And they come in long needles and short needles, and my needles fell off of that one. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to stay off. Uh, but stuff like this, some of this looks awful, awful, awful natural. We've added that to our pieces of real wood, like that little cedar we had there. Sure. That, um, be careful that you don't get cedar log and, and spruce. Uh, and spruce habitat, but you can add that right on, into your yeah into your base and actually make a green tree out Hold of it. Hold it up there see what it looks yeah. like. It's kind of it did something like that. We could even yeah. have it growing out out from the tree like so. Be something. Um, that just looks attractive. Um, 
This, I believe, is juniper, yeah. and this is that's plastic, um, and yeah. it's pretty darn good. I and remember when very, we first yeah. got that stuff. We have pine trees on the entrance of the shop out here, and yeah. when we got some that looked really real, I went and put them in the branch, like eye level, where you know, right where you would see it. And I had everybody go out and try to find the artificial branch, and they were within six inches of it all the time, and nobody but never found it. Out. Huh. Um, this is a, a preserved cedar. These look real nice too. Yeah. How would you create a lichen type moss? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Do we have some over there? Uh, we probably have some little lichens. I don't somewhere. know if I can find them. We have the best lichen. Let me let me look. I don't know if I can find them. Where's? I, I bet that was Mandy, wasn't it? That texted. <laughs> no, it was uh, Jim Reichs. <laughs> Uh, we do have some really cool lichens that are cast. They're actually molded um, from real lichen. Um, there, are, there are a lot of different opportunities out there for, for lichen, but um, different types of paint uh, that separate kind of a crackle paint um, with varying effects. But these, are, these lichens that we carry are various sizes, and um, they they're molded from the real thing. They look really, they really come good. They in a variety of colors, and I don't have the, gr the green ones. They're fabulous. Um, these are the orange ones. Um, that was just one, that was a practice one that we painted just to see if it, if, uh, how they hold paint, and they actually hold paint pretty nice. But they come, they come in a really natural green color, yeah. and they're, they're like a, um, almost like a latex, and you can glue them right down to the rocks. Work great. Come in a bunch. Come in a bag with a whole lot of different sizes. I can't believe you found those. I haven't seen those in forever. They've been laying there forever. <laughs> um, but they're very. I mean, when you see, when you see them, they're as yeah. natural as yeah. as uh, they can be. Um, I was up in Canada or close to Canada last year, and there was a bunch of lichen on all the rocks. All the rocks like this were loaded with lichen, and I took many, 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 many pictures, and they were all just like the packages we get. Yeah. They're yeah. really nice lichen. Um, the other thing that uh, we would do, and we do to a lot of our bases, is grasses. And we have a grass, um, we call it cover grass, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, comes in a lot of different colors. Comes in natural and light yellow and light green and medium green and dark green yeah. and brown and red. Mm -hmm. and um, some of the colors I've seen, which I would never use, never use on a mount like this, people use them on those African savanna scenes, and I go, wow, yeah. I would have never thought some of those grass combinations would look so yeah. good. But you can take um, some, this is actual preserved grass and it's dyed, and it's, it doesn't shed, it doesn't fall apart, it lasts forever, it's exceptional um, grass. and inexpensive but you can take if this is a, a little too green for you take take just a little bit of green like this and add it to a little bit of brown and you mm -hmm. change the whole color or yellow yeah. or you know whatever yeah. um, comes in a mint color lots of different colors and it's so inexpensive and it works good in um, upland oh, game birds or anything. pheasant yeah. scenes chucker scenes um, deer habitats, anything. Yeah. There's anything that is in grass is going to be like this. And this is a lot. This is. It goes a long ways. Yeah. We buy it by the kilo. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that works really well. And, and you can, you don't have to use it full length. You can shorten it, um, use it in shorter undercover, make it, uh, let it grow longer as it gets toward the back of your base if you want to. And so what we usually do with it, well. I don't have a scissors here, but um, we'll take a cluster of it like this, however big a cluster we have. Now here's where Brett was talking about polka dotty, polka dotty, polka dotty. Don't do that. Um, maybe have a big cluster. Maybe have a bunch of little clusters. Maybe have a little bit bigger cluster. And then I like to just take plain old thread, wrap it around the base, just go round and round and round and round, bust it off pull it through the stems that are sticking below the string and and they're, it's kind of locked in place. Yeah. Um, we're going to dip it in glue anyway to plant it, so don't worry about uh, 
tie in knots to hold it from untying or anything like that. Yeah. And then you'll end up with something like this. Now this is a, a little guy, but uh, you can make big clusters, little clusters. Mm -hmm. And if we were, which we'll do, we'll do this um, whole elk, you'll, you'll see it, we will post it. But um, he's gonna have a considerable amount of grass on there. And one thing to remember whenever you're doing all this habitat and all your um, pine and juniper and all your mm -hmm. elements are dust collectors. Yes. And this yeah. is going to look so beautiful when it goes to the customer that he's going to do handstands when he sits back and looks at it. But a year from then, he's going to call you up and say, how do I clean this thing? <laughs> or he's going to say, can you come clean yeah, my can trophy you come room? Clean it? Uh, but now, here's what I'd do for this. I'd tie myself up a whole bunch of these. We do yeah. 50, a big maybe, bundle, a yeah. lot of them. Different size groups, maybe different heights. I have a little, um, oops, you don't have Elmer's glue. I'd have a little uh, cup of Elmer's glue. I take different size screwdrivers. I got foam down here, just like this. I'm going to plant some of this stuff. I dip this in Elmer's glue, and voila, threads are buried, grass is planted. And the nice thing that seems pretty simple but that's that screwdriver trick is a whole bunch better than using a drill bit which will pull all that foam out and then we you end up with that. a little pile of foam then you gotta get all that foam worms yep. out of there yeah yep and then you blow it off with the compressor and you blow half the dirt off your base and then go back and re-dirt it's a pain and now but, um when i when i told you i had the um, young lady that worked for us go out and see how grass grows the one thing that she came away with that whole thing is it doesn't grow in patterns. It grows in clusters. Um, it, it has a root system that leads to another one, yeah. to another one. And uh, it was pretty interesting what she learned from my little yeah. chastisement. <laughs> uh, awesome. I think that wraps up the questions. OK. Nice. And I think this about wraps up this. We will finish this. Um, and. Um, all that's left is the fun stuff. Now, now yeah. it gets really, really fun. Yeah. We have to fasten the rail on yet. That hasn't been attached permanently, um, the top rail. We'll and do leather on the we back. We've got to do leather that's, on the back. We'll yep. do that last. That's intentionally last, just because we don't want to get anything on that leather. So we'll do all the big, messy paint and everything. Um, but yeah. and, we'll then, um, and then, like I said, this is the fun stuff, planting the grass, um, it yeah. gets so fun that you don't know when to quit. You know, you can <laughs> keep going, keep going. Um, we'll also are going to treat this deer in a very similar manner. Um, we're going to um, put some dirt on here, plant grass on it. Yeah. Deer's going to be on, the rock will be painted, and this is going to set on the customer's own base. Um, that deer, yeah. too, is going to have leather in the back. Uh, yep, yeah. So we will, uh, we will show you both of these when we get them done, which will be probably this week. Well, after the fourth. After the, say. yeah. And our giveaway. Yes, our giveaway is going to be this brand new Matuska taxidermy uh, camo with a back American flag hat. And That's it's adjustable. That's pretty darn 4th of July-ish. Just yeah, for the 4th of July, stars time. and stripes. Good and job, that Portland. is going to go to Sarah DeJournet. Oh. Uh, that's pretty fun. That's so. Make sure to like and share this video and follow our page to be entered in next week's giveaway. Okay, have a happy 4th of July yes. and hope you all come yeah. back with 10.